Hey, GM Jim from Wizards and Wordslingers here to talk about making great NPCs and how to get your players invested emotionally. As the author of a couple dozen novels, I've created literally hundreds of characters in my fiction over a decade of publishing. And one thing I've learned in that time is that in order to get a reader to connect with a story, you have to make them care about the characters. It's the exact same when running D&D or any other tabletop RPG. So I'm here to give you some tips of how to draw your players into your game by making them fall in love with your world. This is the same whether you're running a homebrew adventure or something published, although it should be a little easier with pre-published. Hopefully whoever wrote the adventure will have done some of this work for you. So here we go. First of all, introduce your PCs to a town. Make sure that the town has at least one unique or memorable feature, like a giant twisting tree in the middle of the market that makes the air smell sweet year round. Or put the town near hills with blue crystalline rocks that bathe the area in blue light. Or maybe there's an unusual kind of bird that sings every morning. Notice how I've engaged three different senses with these three examples. Whatever the unique town feature is, make it something your players will remember and something they can associate with the town so they'll get that pleasant sense of recall whenever it comes up. Pinging your players' memories is a great way to make them invested. Next, introduce them to no fewer than three fully-fledged NPCs. If you're a newer GM, this may seem like a lot, but it's not as tough as you think. But you have to do it properly. These should not be NPCs you're improvising. They should be thought out beforehand before your PCs visit the town for the first time. And don't introduce them all at once. If you put them all in the same tavern and have them walk up to the party each in succession, your players probably won't remember all of them. Mike Shea from Sly Flourish says our players don't know what's going on about 50% of the time. And even if they are paying attention, they still miss stuff. Don't be afraid to repeat yourself, especially the important bits. Just like the town's unique feature, give each NPC their own individual quirks. Something memorable. Give each NPC qualities to make them stand out or be unique, like a silly physical quirk, an accent, or an odd vernacular. If you're a GM on the Shire side, it'll feel weird to use an accent or toss your hair while talking. But then your players will start laughing and you'll realize they're laughing because of you, not at you which is an important distinction. I like to give every NPC both physical traits and mental traits, as well as a desire and a secret. This can be something like Glenda, feminine dwarf farmer. She's tough but motherly, and to her, food is love. She'll cook anyone a meal. She wants the gnolls in the hills to stop stealing her chickens, and her secret is that she's in love with the town mayor, but too shy to do anything about it. Now give her a southern accent and have her constantly trying to force biscuits and jam on everyone in the party, and they'll never forget her. Another thing you can do to make memorable NPCs is to use irony. In Lost Mine of Fandelver, there's a creature called a Nothic living under a ruined manor house. Ghastly, scary thing with a monstrous green eye. It's terrifying and carnivorous and could be a tough combat encounter. But the last time I ran a group through this adventure, they decided to chat with the creature instead of rushing in to attack. So I named him Snewert and gave him an awkward, gravelly kind of voice. And to build on the irony, I thought it would be memorable to make him super lazy. Pure evil and with a desire to kill and eat everyone in town, but also, he just can't be bothered to put out the effort to go on a killing spree. The players loved him. But anyway, back to those three NPCs you introduced to the party. You can make each one a quest giver so the PCs will have a reason to interact with them, or make them full of useful information the party can use to achieve their goals. But it's also important to tie them to the town. And since we have three, we can give them distinct relationships to the area. Maybe they're in different factions. Maybe one loves the town just the way it is, has lived here for 60 years, and has nothing bad to say about the place. Maybe one loves the town but wants to build and improve and change things for future generations. And maybe one has a reason to despise the corruption they believe has infected the local government. 
Showing these differing views opens up your players' brains to pick who they want to side with, what they believe, which actions they want to take. Give the players the information and then let them have the agency to choose how to react to these different opinions. All of this helps draw them in and make them become increasingly invested in the town and its NPCs. It won't take long to hook your players into the world this way. But now that you've got them firmly by the heartstrings, what do you do? Now you get evil. Now you put one or more of those beloved NPCs or the whole town in jeopardy and you won't have to worry about motivating your players into action. They'll jump at the chance to save someone they care about or avenge the death of an innocent and they'll feel like it was entirely their idea. Which is the point of tabletop gaming. Questing. Player agency. Fun. And of course, if all else fails, just have the town's rich guy pay them a bunch of gold to go do the thing. Because that always works. Anyway, I'm GM Jim from Wizards and Wordslingers, and this has been another in my series of GM tips. Take care of yourself and go get those players invested.